All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Athenian Stranger tutorial video where uh, we're going to go over some um, multiplication rules today for variables. All right, so I want to start with an example that I know that you will know. Let's try four times four. Now I hear everyone yelling out 16, right? But there's another way to write it. So yes, 16 is definitely a correct answer. But we could also write four times four as four squared, okay? Four squared is 16. Now many people, by the time they get to ninth grade, they already know that the square root of 16 is four. Maybe you've just memorized that. Well, the reason the square root of 16 is four is because four times four equals 16, and we can rewrite this four times four as just four squared equals 16. Well, let me get right to the point. So that works for numbers, and it works the same way for letters. Let's write that up there again, but this time we'll do five times five. My question to you is, what makes this five squared? Okay, well, here's what makes it five squared. They don't put these there, but there are little invisible ones in that exponent section up there. And so the, the real reason that five times five is five to the power of two, which we call five squared, is because we add these. So it's really five raised to the power of one plus one. That's coming from here and here. So one plus one is two. So we say five raised to the power of two, or five squared. Okay, one more example with the numbers, then we'll, we'll jump to letters. So now let's do six squared, six to the power two, times six. What would it be? Okay, so we're really playing with numbers here. Don't worry about that six times six is 36. Don't worry about that. Just worry about this little rule about adding the exponents. So we have six to the second power, and we have a six all by itself. Well, that's six to the first power. So if this rule applied when they were ones, maybe it applies when the exponents are greater than one. And sure enough, this is equal to six raised to the power of two plus one, which is three, all right? So that equals six raised to the power of three. Now here's an important fact that I don't want to run by and have people kind of uh, worried about it. When you have the exponent of two, we call that squared, okay? When you have an exponent of three, we call that cubed, okay? Or cube, okay? So five squared, six cubed. Okay, so here's the basic idea, ladies and gentlemen. If this policy works for numbers, which we've proven that it does, it also might work when they're just letters. Just watch this and see if your own mind doesn't give you the intuition for what to do. What if I have x times x? Okay, just like the numbers before, 
there's little invisible ones up here. And just like the numbers before, when multiplying two things that are the same, remember we multiplied four times four and we called that four squared. Then we multiplied five times five and we called that five squared, or five to the power of two. So when we multiply x times x, we call that x squared. Okay. Just remember, when multiplying two things that are the same, and I'm going to tell you what these things are called in a second, you add the exponents. Okay. So that's how we get x squared. So what's the big rule? We need to know what these are called. So in, in these examples, we had 4 times 4 equals 4. So this was 4 to the first times 4 to the first equals 4 to the 1 plus 1. And that equaled 4 to the power of 2 or 4 squared. Notice that this rule only works where you get to add the exponents when both of your letters or both of your numbers are the same. Okay, so we call, we call those, those numbers and letters, we call them bases. Okay, just like in a baseball game, we call them bases. And the rule is, when the bases are the same, x, x, 4, 4, and you're multiplying, multiply, multiply, you add the exponents. I think we should write that down. When the bases are the same, we add the exponents. Okay? And so that's one of the, the really important exponent laws of multiplication. When the bases are the same and we're multiplying, maybe I should put that in there, should put in here, uh, and we are multiplying, we add the exponents, okay? This is so important, okay? This needs to be repeated like a chant until you just remember it, okay? And remember, you got this. Okay, go ahead, if you are watching this video, take a screenshot of this, because I'm gonna erase it in three, two, one. Okay, now we're going to work a couple of examples. So, let me throw up here an example that doesn't work. We have x times y. All that equals is x, y. There's no squared, okay? So, what if we had x times y times x? Hmm. Well, there it's all being multiplied. And so we can just we can arrange this however it doesn't matter if it's x times y times x or x times x times y or y times x times x. It doesn't matter how they are arranged, ladies and gentlemen. What matters is that it's multiplication that's happening between all three of these letters. So, just like before, we have these exponents that are hidden from us, ones. So if it's just a letter, the exponent is one. Very good. So here's what you can do. You can group the letters that are the same using multiplication. So here I'm going to 
and I'm going to rewrite this, okay, like this. I'm going to write it like this. X times X times Y. That's allowed. And we'll put those numbers back there. Okay? So it turns out that we don't care about this Y. We'll just worry about these X's. Remember, when you have bases that are the same, here we do, in this local little tiny environment, we add the exponents. So x times x is x squared, or x to the power of 2. So what you end up with is x squared times y. And y just comes along for the ride. OK? Very good. Give everybody a second there to get that jotted down. You know, and I really, I hope this is, uh, I hope this is easy because really, the less you think, the less you think about this, the easier it will be. I promise you that. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to erase this now. Let's do another example, but let's throw some numbers in there. And let's throw in some distribution. Okay, so remember, when we see these parentheses, we are going to follow PEMDAS. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Parentheses, exponent, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. Well. Here we've got the parentheses. We look inside. I can't combine a letter with a whole number. It doesn't work like that when it's, a, when it's addition, okay? So the only thing I can do is distribute, okay? I'm going to distribute now like this. I'm going to multiply 4x times each term inside this parentheses. Okay, so let's do that. We're going to write it all out. 4x times x. 4x times x. Okay. Plus, plus 4x times 6. 4x times 6. So right over here is where the magic is going to happen. We have 4x to the first times x to the first. So again, if you zoom in to this little problem here, x to the first times x to the first is x to the 1 plus 1, or x squared, x to the 2, x to the power of 2. So we can rewrite this. OK, here's our next line, 4x to the power of 2. Okay, and now I've simplified that to this. Plus, now what is 4x times 6? Well, just multiply the numerical parts together. 4 times 6 is 24, so 4x times 6 is 24x. 24x. Okay, fantastic. That's how you would do that problem. Okay. Let's do another example. I feel like we should do another example. I'm going to wait, make sure everybody's got this written down. This is why it's so important to actually write these things down because, um, like, especially the parentheses will help you remember. Let's erase. And let's do one more problem, at least. Let's do 9x squared, open parentheses, x to the third plus 6x. Oh my goodness. It looks scary, but guess what? It isn't. It's a paper tiger, okay? Which means, paper tiger means it looks scary, but it's not. So I look inside the parentheses and I've got x cubed 
plus 6x, x to the third plus 6x. I cannot add, even though they're both x's, I cannot add them because their exponents are different. Okay? I cannot add them because this has an exponent of 3 and this has an exponent of 1. So these are not like terms, just so you understand. So the only thing left to do is distribute. Outside we've got 9x squared. Let's distribute, multiply 9x squared to both terms inside the parentheses. And like, I, like before, we're going to write it all out before we actually do it. We'll write here 9x squared times, we're going to multiply it by x to the third power, x to the third power. 9x squared times x to the third power, which is x cubed. So 9x to the second times x to the third plus, plus 9x squared times 6x, 9x squared, or 9x to the second power times 6x, and that's 6x to the first power, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, now time to focus in. We are going to focus in on these sections here. Well, I'm going to rearrange this other one here so you see it better. But look here first. Forget about the 9. Look inside here. You've got bases that are the same and you're multiplying so you, you can add the exponents. So x squared times x to the third, or x to the second, 2, times x to the third, 3, is x to the 2 plus 3. Let's write that out. That's 9x raised to the power of 2 plus 3. Okay. Well, what is 2 plus 3? Okay. It's 5. All right, so this is just... 9x to the fifth power. All right? So we're done with this. Now we're moving on here to this. So the first thing I want to do is I want to rearrange 9x squared times 6x to the first. I want to rearrange it so my numbers that are being multiplied are off to the left and my letters are off to the right. So it's okay if I rewrite this 9 times 6 times x to the power of 2 times x to the power of 1. It's okay, because look what I did. 9 times x squared times 6 times x is just the same as 9 times 6 times x squared times x to the first. It's, it's the same thing. I've just moved these around because implicitly between all of these are multiplication. This is all being multiplied. So if, you'll, if you followed me that far, we can kind of group these together. And once again, we can focus in on our exponents here. So I have x to the second power times x to the first power. Remember, when the bases are the same, and these are both bases that are the same, you can add the exponents. So this is x to the 2 plus 1, or x to the third power, or x cubed. 9 times 6 is 54. So 9x squared times 6x equals 54, we'll put here, plus 54x to the third power. This is actually your final answer. Okay. Okay, so I just, in case that blew your mind, I want to show you the kind of work you're going to be doing for your homework. All right, so we're going to go to Delta Math and take a look at what we're doing for our homework here. So that's the, that's the end of the, the lecture part, but what about the homework part? What's a, what about the part that counts? Let's get Delta loaded up.
Okay, so I'm going to transition away from the, uh, the video camera. Now I'm kind of working from my computer here. So now we're on Delta. Let's log in. And when we get logged in, what I want to look at is the, this uh, distributive property. I think this might be the wrong one. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's this one. Mm. Here we go. Okay, this is what I've look, been looking for. I have to remember what that is. That's the distributive property level one. Okay. So let me find an example problem that'll work well for us. Okay, this will work well. So let's take a look here at this problem. We are supposed to distribute negative 9x to both terms inside the parentheses. Okay. So what I'm going to do is just grab that real quick and put it into our OneNote. Okay. Copy, and we'll go to OneNote and paste it in here. We can work on it. Okay, so this is the problem we're working on. Now, this will be just like your homework. I mean, literally. So we look inside the parentheses here, and we see that there's nothing we can do. We have a whole number, 6 and negative 2x. We can't do anything. So we're just going to distribute negative 9x inside the parentheses here. So we'll write it all out. Negative 9x times 6, okay, plus negative 9x times negative 2x. Okay, it's really important that you put a plus sign here because you're kind of sectioning off these two separate problems. Okay, so we're going to work on these separately. Now, let's do this first, uh, this first uh, parenthetical expression over here. Negative 9x times 6. Well, all that you do is you multiply the numbers together. So you're going to multiply negative 9 times 6. Well, 9 times 6, 54. Negative 9 times 6, negative 54. So down here I'm going to write negative 54x. Okay. Now we're going to work on this over here. And I, this is where I say it might be better to group these dif differently than they are. We, they're all being multiplied, so instead of negative 9 times x times negative 2 times x, we could say negative 9 times negative 2 times x times x. These two things are exactly the same, okay? These two expressions. But the, ben the benefit is, is good. We can do the numerical part, negative 9 times negative 2. A negative times a negative is a positive. 9 times 2 is 18, so negative 9 times negative 2 is also positive 18. So I'm going to come in here and write okay, 18. Now x times x. So this is really kind of the key moment of the problem. These have 1s. If you group them together, you have x to the first power times x to the first power. That's x to the 1 plus 1, or x squared, or x to the 2. So this is x squared. These are being multiplied. So I kind of want to bring, I want to bring this and this together with addition. Okay, I'm bringing that addition symbol down from right here. Okay, 
So I have negative 54x plus 18x squared, right? Negative 54x plus 18x squared. Let's go see if that's right. Negative 54x plus 18x, and now how do you put in an x squared? Well, what you're going to do is hold down the shift key and hit 6, and that's going to put you into the exponent position. I'll say it again. You hold down the shift key and hit 6, and then you can put the squared. Now, I think there's a way that, before we submit that, I want to show you. If you go over here and tap this little keyboard, this keyboard pops up that might actually be helpful. So we wanted to type negative 54x, okay, plus, and then 18x squared. So 18x. Now look, you hover over this A squared button, and it'll create the squared for you. Okay, so just if you, if you don't remember shift 6, what you're looking for on your keyboard is you're looking for this character. Okay, I don't know if you call it a housetop or something. It's a, it, on a keyboard, it's above the number 6. So you want to you wanna hit shift so you can get that, that little housetop button. That'll create that exponent. Well, anyway, let's see if we're right. All right, well, we're right. That's exciting. Oh, look at this. It's going to do an animation. I love it. It's showing the distribution. There it is. Mm -hmm. Great. Let's do another one. Ooh, this one will be good for a lot of reasons. Let's do this one. I think I'll stop after this one because I think you'll either get it or you'll need more help than I can provide in this video. Okay, last problem. Here we go. Let's right click and click paste. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen. We have this parenthetical expression, negative six minus x. Super important. Very first thing I want you to do is go put a one here. Because there's a one hiding in front of that x. It's gonna help you a lot. Also, you wanna put the exponent one. Okay, so you, you put ones. Here's an exponent of one. All right, put that there. All right, so now we're going to distribute. Here's our distribution lines. So we'll write it all out. We have 2x times negative 6 plus, so I'm, again, I'm sectioning off. This is the first distribution line right here. Here comes the second distribution, 2x times negative 1x. So we'll, we section it off with addition. We write 2x times negative 1x. Now here's where I'm going to put those little ones. And we can section this off as well, just so we can work on these pieces individually. Okay, so now we want to multiply the numbers 2 times negative 6. Well, 2 times 6 is 12, so 2 times negative 6 is negative 12. So 2x times negative 6 is negative 12x. Negative 12x. All right, now what? Well, here we go over here. We can multiply these numbers together. 2 times negative 1, that's negative 2. Negative 2. And then we have x to the first times x to the first. Okay. So x to the first times x to the first is x to the 1 plus 1, or x squared. So here I'm just going to write this again. We're going to bring all this down. We've got negative 12x plus, and then I've got negative 2 times x squared, or x to the 2. Further simplification, we can write negative 12x plus negative 2x squared. And then we don't need to write plus a negative. We can just write the minus sign, and we can join these two together to make it look nice and neat. Negative 12x minus 2x squared. Okay? And that should, that should do it. Okay, that should be correct.
All right, so let's go see if that's correct. And we'll also practice typing it. So first we need to hit the dash, dash negative 12x minus 2x squared. So I'm gonna type 2x and then I'm gonna hold down the shift key and hit six so that the cursor goes up into that, uh, into that high position there and it's squared, all right? Negative 12x minus 2x squared. Just being super careful. Let's submit. All right, we got it right. So we can watch this little animation here. Good. So let's just kind of cover back what we, uh, what we learned today. We learned, um, we learned a lot, didn't we? So we'll, we'll actually go back here. And let me put myself back up on the camera just to close us out, okay? I really want to thank you for your attention here. Let's just remember what we learned. We learned that x times x is equal to, because of this rule, where we have these exponents up there, it's equal to x to the 1 plus 1, which is just x to the 2 and we call that x squared. Okay, so when that is outside, like we had that 4x open parentheses 2 minus x, have a problem like that, then we just remember there's ones all over the place, just like this, and then we do our distribution. Okay, 4x times 2 is 8x, 4x times negative 1x is negative 4x squared. So once you get fast with this, it will be super easy for you to do these problems. All right, well listen, thank you so much for your attention today. Thank you for watching. If you are one of my students at this time, it would be a great opportunity for you to go to deltamath.com and complete that assignment set. Uh, for the rest of you who aren't my students, please make sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you're always alerted when I release new videos on this channel. Thank you.